Hey guys, Pete here. So this is going to be my Mr. Robot Season 3 Episode 5 review. I'll be honest, it took a little bit of time to decompress and think about it all. If you hadn't noticed, the entire episode was set up as a single take or a single shot. Of course, there's editing involved with it. I mean, it's not like there was just one camera that they had all the actors in the right places and everything else, but... I think there'll probably be some cinephiles out there that will really kind of complain about this because it's basically a sort of gimmick, I think. I, I think people who really, you know, know a lot about film, they kind of think that it can be turned into a gimmick too much. And even though there's a lot of work and preparation that goes into it, it's not enough to make it an important part of any real production. In that regard, I'd have to say that it worked really well for me because this is a show that's continually broken the fourth wall by having Elliot talk to us. So whether you had all these cuts and different things and you shortened up some of the parts that may have been drawn out a little bit because of the continuous shot, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I mean, there's basically like three different stages in how the episode unfolds. And especially during the Elliot part, I just thought it added to the tension in a great way because we talk to Elliot. Elliot talks to us, I should say. And we're watching him deal with something in real time. In the Angela part of it, it was more of a, all right, so now we finally get to understand how much Angela really knows about what's going on with the Dark Army. I mentioned in my recap of the last episode that she sort of just at a level of religious fervor, you know what I mean? She's following her great leader, White Rose, and... We saw her have to face some tough decisions. When she gave up that name, that woman's probably going to die. And when she takes the bag, the red wheelbarrow barbecue bag, it wasn't lunch that was in there. There was something else there. And we know that White Rose has Elliot's death as part of the plan. So she may have been on the verge, and sh or may still be, because we saw her run into Elliot at the very end. She may be on the verge of having to decide if sending her friend over the edge to kill himself or to kill him herself is this idea that we don't know exactly what it is that White Rose has fed to her worth that kind of thing. So a lot of stuff happened, but I think it's worth recapping at least quickly the different things that went down here. Of course, we could talk for hours and break everything down, but let's look at the major things that happen. The episode starts out very strangely. Like Elliot, we don't really know what's happened since we last saw him get drugged. Apparently, it's been three days. He's not really sure what's going on. And there's this really nice sound in the background that accentuates what he's saying. It's like one of those sounds that you're just not like, you can't put your finger on it. Where's that coming from? Am I the only one that hears it? Is it just in my head? It's one of those things, right? There's a part where, he, you know, a, a guy speaks to him in German. And from what I understand, the translation is every beginning is difficult. Every beginning is a beginning. So Elliot basically shows up stairs at his cubicle, finds out he's locked out, and he quickly understands that something's wrong. He's able to get on his pervy neighbor, cubicle neighbor's computer, find out that his patch worked. The Dark Army tried to start stage two earlier in the day, and now they're on their contingency plan because he was able to stop them at least temporarily. After learning that, though, he finds out the reason he's locked out of his system is they're, become, they're coming to fire him, like Angela asked Price to do. And this is where the long shot, the, the long take, was really kind of effective, I thought, because we're watching him figure out what he wants to do in real time. And because there's all this other activity, the people looking for him, his thought process of trying to go and figure out how he can best stop them from working their way around the patch, we feel like we're right there with him. We feel like we're a part of the narrative. At least that's the way I felt. He even says to us at one point, don't leave me, stay focused. So we're in it together, right? And for someone that we know is extremely paranoid, <laughs> we can feel the paranoia. There's another point where he says that, you know, he's trying to calm himself down. He's trying to look natural and he's talking about slowing down. And it sort of almost feels like everything around him slows down. Like it doesn't go into slow motion or anything, if I remember correctly. But I made a note that it's he says slow down and the tension feels like it slows down. I love the lady sniffing the white out and I love how that wasn't the right choice. 
But he eventually gets back on and he realizes he's got to go find this computer. It's called an HSM computer if he's going to have any chance in stopping them. We get a great scene where he has to dip into this conference room and play it cool. If, <laughs> I don't know what else you'd call it to buy time so that the people outside will pass. And Sean from sales tries to tell him he's in the wrong place after Elliot puts him off for a while that he's sent, you know, he's sending the email and he's doing all this, whatever. And to buy himself that little bit of extra time, he gives us a great bit of dialogue. And it's just one of those things. It works because it's something that's universal. It would work on anyone. It's not anything that he doesn't social engineer Sean based on Sean. He does it in a way of anybody that has any responsibility, and it works. And it's, and it's funny for us to watch it, but he manages to get out of there. Only he ends up getting seen, so he has to take off to the elevator, and then he has to make some decisions. He's no, he's, he knows he's not going to be able to make it to that HSM computer. He summons not the real Mr. Robot, but sort of like a ghostly version of him. He, he, you know, he picks his brain, like, what would Mr. Robot do, basically? And he realizes that that building is going to come down. His best thing that he can do is get people out of there before they all die. He ends up outside, and Darlene drops the truth bomb on him about working with the FBI. And this is something I talked about in my last recap, was everybody in the story at this point thinks they're doing the right thing. Really, none of their things line up with each other, except that Darlene and Elliot both have incentive to actually stop stage two. He also finds out about Angela's betrayal at this point, but I thought it was pretty profound that that didn't seem to bother him as much as it bothered what Darlene did bothered him. Like, he finds out Angela has betrayed him, but he says to Darlene, but you did too. And she makes the case of why she did it. But because they have that brother-sister bond, he still can't really stomach that betrayal. But we have to also remember here that even though Elliot's our hero, our unreliable narrator, his mental illness and his inability to have relationships plays a big part in all of that with Angela and Darlene. Not that it means that they should betray him or whatever, but if they had a different kind of relationship, none of this would be so exciting to watch. We know that Darlene does care about Elliot. We know that Angela did at one point. Angela seems to have something that she cares about more, and she may just be naive enough to think that at the end of the day, at the end of White Rose's plan, that everyone will live happily ever after. It's profound, too, when you think about it. This is where we first see the camera leave Elliot. Like I said, there's some editing in there, I'm sure, but we followed him all the way up until this point, and we don't leave him until we see this crowd of protesters and someone who's obviously planted by the Dark Army there to incite the riot. I think this is an amazing thing, too, because they're not all Dark Army guys out there. They're real protesters that are pissed off about everything, basically, as CNN lays it out for us, right? They're upset about this annexation of Congo. They're upset about this new currency. They're upset about everything. Everything is going to shit after 5-9. But the thing that ends up moving them to actually attack the E-Corp building are people that are planted by a very powerful man who is just pulling strings. They think they're doing, all those people think they're doing the right thing because Evil Corp is this evil empire that needs to be brought down. But they're just pawns in White Rose's game at this point. Either way, the first part where we see Elliot, it's somewhat subdued, it's somewhat psychological going through his thought process as he's trying to find the problem in the code or beat the game, whatever you want to call it, whatever different way you want to describe it. And then it goes into straight chaos. And we find out that Angela is waiting for a call from Irving to find out what to do. He at least explains to her that those are their guys. That's their distraction. And he tells her that he needs her to do something. There's a package outside and she needs to get to Elliot. There's no way that that can happen. So Angela has to do it herself. She has a problem in the elevator whenever she drops the identification card, but because those people that are on her floor are the ones that are hardcore Dark Army, they take out the security guard and she's able to go and do what she has to do. 
And it's a vicious beatdown. I think that was supposed to be something that we noticed that they didn't just knock the guy out. I mean, they were giving him boots on the ground. And I feel like Angela must have felt something at that point, sort of like Elliot did in the aftermath. Like when we see him walking around and he sees all this pain and suffering that he causes, the thing that we saw in episode one, I think this is Angela's moment where that starts to happen. Her eyes, her thoughts are only on what she wants to get from White Rose. And and there's real consequences. There's real people getting hurt here. And I think that the acting is pretty good all the way around. I mean, I know there's a lot of Angela haters out there, but I think Angela has really emerged as being a redeemed character. So she does what she has to do in the HSM room. There's a problem. Someone comes in and sees her. Luckily, the Dark Army guy comes in and she gets maced. And like I said, she's probably going to die as a result of that. And we, we see Angela struggle with that a little bit later. I feel, in my opinion, I feel like she did what she was supposed to do with the computer, that that part is going to be okay. After that happens, we get the one funny moment. Well, there might be a couple funny moments, but the one funniest moment when she goes out to meet her, the person that she has to give it to, and it's it's our friend from the Red Wheelbarrow Barbecue in his uh, hazmat suit. Of course, he's eating his trademark sandwich. He gets what he needs from her, and he hands off a bag. I've already touched on the bag, so I won't I won't go into it too far. But I mean, I think that to me at the time, it felt like he's delivering something to her that was meant for Elliot and it's not anything good. I think that Irving on the phone being upset that Elliot didn't follow the instructions isn't nearly as much about the fact that Angela might have messed up, but that Elliot isn't physically there. Because honestly, they set it up in a way that, I mean, it's, it was a, it was a card that had everything written out step by step so that a contingency plan would be that if Angela couldn't get to Elliot, she would probably still be able to do it. There, you didn't see a lot of stress. I mean, as far as the time and the destruction that was going on, she didn't seem conflicted or confused about what she was supposed to be doing there. Either way, it does seem that everything's in place for stage two to happen. Will the building actually come down is, I feel like it's probably going to. I think the evacuation is the tricky part. Let's not forget that Elliot, when he went outside, he did call them and say that a bomb was going to go off. (laughs) I thought it was pretty funny in that exchange when she said, oh, we don't use UPS. And, you know, he was, but you can't just call a place without them following up on it. I don't think whenever there's a bomb threat. So I think that there's a pretty good possibility they could roll out of there, but I don't know. I've already taken a look at the the trailer and I and I made a video that you know where we had some questions cuz it's the shortest teaser that I've seen for the show and we don't really get a lot about what's going to happen except for it's still going to continue. I think in that they kind of give you the idea that there's it, it it either did happen or it's going to happen. But at the end of this episode, we really don't know. The last thing we see is that when Angela goes back to her office, Elliot's there. And he says, is there something that you want to tell me? And that's a conversation that is going to be tricky because I think that Elliot should be the one who has the advantage there. But everything that's been going down has been leading to Angela having the upper hand in that relationship. Plus, she knows that she can drug him out and get Mr. Robot back. And that could, that could it, that's what could be in the red barbecue bag. It could be that innocuous or whatever. It could just be a syringe with that so they can get Mr. Robot back or whatever. But I don't know. I just thought it was a great episode. There weren't too many problems. There was a couple things that could have been a little bit better. But like I said, I thought Portia Doubleday did a great job doing the mace, you know, being mace, putting the mask on, even with the mace going to bat, doing what she had to do, but also giving us the feeling that this is bad news. This is bad stuff that I'm doing, and I hope it's all worth it in the end. When she gives the name, I mean, I think that was a really powerful scene because the woman was just running, ran in there because she was scared, and, you know, she was nobody. But she's going to have to be killed because she saw her. So, yeah, I I think it took a little while for me to process. I highly doubt that we're going to see an episode next week where it's going to be one single shot like, like it was this time. 
I think we're going to have a lot more of that conflict in between what all the characters are doing. But I'm loving where we ended up so far. I think that most of the stuff that happened in here was technically believable. I know Cora Donna was one of the co-writers of this episode. I liked how we saw Elliot being able to use this, the immense size of Evil Corp against it. I loved the Sean from Sales thing wheelbarrow barbecue guy being out there and it was just one of those things at the end you're just like gosh i had, I need a rest i need to rest to just think about all this now it'll be it'll be interesting to see, see where things land now that elliot knows that the two people that really that he trusted in his life have been actively betraying him in the same way that we have known that and i imagine if angela was able to keep mr robot around for the entire weekend that she'll be able to do that as long as it's necessary and of course we saw him in the next trailer so let me know what you guys think check out my quick trailer kind of question video that i made it's so short i don't think i can make an actual trailer breakdown please like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel if you have not already please check out my patreon and think about joining us over there follow me on social media uh that's the easiest way to get a hold of me i I interact with people on twitter all the time and i also keep an instagram and facebook page if you're someone who has a background in film tell me what you thought about that tell me what you thought about that long shot that one single shot kind of feel i read a couple things briefly in you know review and things and it it, it seemed pretty 50 50 well it seemed like it was 80 20 maybe i read one where someone just said it was horrible but that always is the case i guess when you're dealing with critics most people seem to like it and i think you know it really does work because we're invested in our relationship with elliot and following his thoughts So it was neat, at least in the first half, just to be watching him go through all that stuff in real time with the immediacy of like, he can't just go home and think about it and sleep on it or whatever. You know what I mean? Like he has to do all this stuff in real time. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.